I said I wanted to see where you live. So I just, he brought me to this place where he lived, and it was in the suburb. It was about 20 minutes from the center. So we were just walking around, and he showed me a place, and oh, this is the graveyard, and he said, oh, did you see the crosses? Some of them are missing because they are stolen. So that's how I got the idea. And, and I also made contact with the students from the University of Dar es Salaam, and um, Smith is uh, yeah, one of them. So we, so in fact, my crew are all from the, the students from the film department. They are, they are the fine arts department of the, um, they are doing acting and theatre and as well as film. So with that, I, I, I created characters around. Uh, and Smith, I chose Smith because I only like to interview my cast and I found out that he lost his mother and sister I mean, in succession to malaria. So I thought, okay, he'll be the perfect guy to carry off the role because, uh, and in fact, um, in fact, my actress, did Grace, she was having malaria, so we had to stop for a while. And a week later, she recovered, but she was still like spacey. <laughs> so, and she, yeah, but, but she, she was. So malaria, malaria is very common there, and so, and yeah, so we had. Um, and I think there's so much resonance with the second film. I feel because it's this uh, it's this a lot of thing where you deal with um, yeah, and that's how I created. So from there, we, we I had audition with a group of uh, uh, amateur theatre group. So they were all in Link's neighborhood. So um, so after the audition, I picked the ones that I think could be in film because they are more um, over there. They are quite. They, they are very much influenced by the Nigerian way of making films, which is very much um, like so surprise and very over the top, and, and I wanted something more subtle. So I selected the rest of the cast from that group that you see they were practicing, and then they were, and then they were, I hear some complaints, and they said, oh, why did I choose the worst actors from the group that we brought? And, 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 and I think it's... Um, yeah, so in fact it, it came to me because Link came to me and said that oh, they were not happy because you chose the worst actors. <laughs> so, uh, but from there we created a script, I mean we created a, not of a full script but a structure of 50 scenes and, and the way I should I know that 50 scenes that each scene will be about 2 minutes so I roughly can get a picture out of this. So we spent 2 days with, uh, with Peter. Peter I think appeared briefly when he was giving instruction to Mariam, yeah, Peter and another person. So we just uh, we crafted a treatment and a script, and and with that, uh, Peter, my assistant, would translate it to my actors. I mean, he would write parts of it in Swahili because they were speaking Swahili, and the actors they don't speak much English. Um, yeah, it used to be uh, it was a German colony, first, and then it became a British colony. So yeah, and that's how it came about. Why I chose Tanzania because I wanted it was near the Rift Valley, and I wanted to explore the origin of man. And that's where Lucy and the, I mean it's between Kenya and Tanzania, which is near to South Africa, just above is on East African side. So my intention was actually to explore that part. And but when I went to Africa, it was I went there with a different story idea. But when I reached there, I just threw out the script because I felt that. I cannot force things, so I, I choose to work starting from scratch based on who I can find, which was very much like how I made my first film, she, which was made in uh, Japan. And my second film, my second feature film, this is my third feature film, was made also dealing with um, non-professional actors, but they are playing themselves. You know, they are, they are just playing who they are, and their training is from the streets. I mean, like, I mean, for them, I think if they are, you're 15 years old, then you're 15 years of training. Like my actress, Chris, she's only 14, so her training is from the streets, and I said, you just play yourself. Yeah, so that's how, and the story is more improvisational. So probably, uh, you want to talk a bit. Uh, okay, I think my film was uh, a little bit of the opposite. I just moved back to Singapore, was, uh, I started shooting about three years ago. And um, I had heard a lot about uh, people living in one room, uh, HP flats on a very limited income, and um, I was very interested in the issue of uh, elderly aging in place. So I visited a number of the older um, estates, and um, I found out that this particular one in Chinatown um, had uh, one of the highest concentrations of elderly who are aging in place. So um, we worked with a number of social work agencies to try to gain access to uh, these people. 
and um, he works you know, also a lot with uh, interpreters uh, because um, actually the Cantonese that they speak is also a very dated form of Cantonese. So it's not the sort of Cantonese that actually exists uh, today, like in Hong Kong. Um, same thing with the Hokkien that the man was speaking. So, um, and, and actually a lot of the place names and the roads that they spoke about, they used uh, very sort of old school traditional colloquial sort of terms for them, again, uh, terms that are not used anymore. So, um, you know, we, we, we sort of uh, interviewed these people. We didn't get a lot of access to them. Um, and, uh, you know, most of the time they actually didn't want to be filmed from the waist down because uh, they didn't want to be shown with any sort of infirmity. They didn't want to be shown hobbling or having trouble walking. Uh, they wanted actually to be shown as, in, in di as dignified a way as possible. So that became a really big issue um, for us um, and we sort of tried to work around that. Um, and yeah, so you know, it, it was uh, it was a pretty amazing experience because um, you know they uh, they slowly opened up. Uh, it, it took a while, um, but uh, you know, the, it, what, what became very apparent too was not just this idea that um, they were living in a society which was kind of just moving ahead and sort of slightly forgetting a little bit about them, but also this idea that uh, they were you know living on a very limited income. And they were very, very aware of um, the fact that they were kind of dying and they were living out you know, the last few years of their lives. And there was this idea of like, what they tried to do to fill in the space um, and uh, how, you know, and, and the days are extremely long. Um, they really don't have very much to do. They don't have TVs. Um, they can't walk. Uh, they can't move anywhere. So you know, they, it, it became very clear that they had a lot of time but not very much to do, and they were literally just waiting. Um, so you know, it was something that you know touched those of us who made the film quite a lot. Um, can you imagine you have any questions? Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, at the beginning of, of your film, I yes. interrupted a lot. Uh, you had a gentleman singing a poem, yes. a song, he, he... and what was that? Um, actually, he was just there, and uh, yeah, the, in the opening of the film, there was this guy at the cemetery. Mm -hmm. So he was saying something, but he's not speaking Swahili because my assistant director couldn't understand what he's talking. So basically, it's just uh, he was praying, but he was using words that uh, that uh, because they also have dialects. Mm -hmm. But he, he he said that he doesn't make sense. So he was just there. Okay. And we just filmed him. In fact, we don't even know his name. But he just came and sat in front of the camera. <laughs> and then I just filmed him. Because he was so interesting. You know, it's like his presence was so interesting. And then during the editing, I, 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 I wanted something to open the film. Yeah, so which is why I... So in, in the process was almost... Because uh, what he said was almost like going in and out. It's like Gertrude Stein, the way... I mean, like, if something like... It makes sense, some parts, but some parts doesn't make sense, and the grammar and the structure doesn't make sense. So my assistant said they, they couldn't translate that part. Yeah. So it was almost like the prophetic, uh, the prophetic uh, madman who knows everything, who sees everything, but then nobody could understand him. So that, that, that was why I, I chose to put him in the film. Um, and for the rest, um, they were... Uh, yeah, and... And, I, and the, the rest of the actors, they are not trained at all, and so the way I work with them is mainly to, um, to just ask them about what, what their life was about. And in fact, that's what they do, like Mariam, she really is a food seller, she cooks uh, food at home and she brings to construction site to sell them. So essentially, they are just playing themselves, and I think what I was interested in is to, to work um, and I think the problems that they have, I mean, that no matter what economic level you are, I mean, you still want to look good, you know. I mean, like, I mean, it's the same here. So I think in some, like in Rotterdam, they were asking, is there a difference between shooting in, in Tanzania and here? I think I felt that the temperament is very much like Southeast Asia. The way things move, the, the feeling and the... Um, in fact, if I felt more at home there than I was in... in, in um, Japan. Um, and it felt like... Um, I've been there before, I don't know why. <laughs> just, yeah, it, it felt like Indonesia, it felt like Jakarta in many ways. Yeah. So.